Down the corridor, St. Damien's also offers a state-of-the-art dental clinic run by a volunteer husband and wife team from the U.S. We're, we're proud of how clean it is. We're proud of how well it's designed, how well it's equipped. One of the biggest problems that we have, but it just is not enough time to treat all, all the needs. And th this is difficult. Meanwhile, construction is starting here on another outpatient clinic for children with special needs. Mothers bring their kids for therapy, support, and a hot meal during the day. We started it two years ago. Because in general in Haiti, if you have a special needs child, you either abandon the child because you can't take care of it, or you lock it away in a room. If you're in, it could be the only room you have in the house, so you can try and go out and do some work because there are no facilities. Also on the grounds at St. Damien's, this Hope for Haiti Health Center offers prenatal care and a program for more than 100 children with HIV. It's also home base for seven full-time field agents who take health care and health education out to the communities. Many diseases we are taking care of can be prevented. So the aim of this program is to offer education and immunization at the household levels. Father Rick Frechette and his team of doctors, volunteers and other workers are also out in the field every day taking health care to those who can't make it to the hospital. They hold clinics in the city's poorest and most dangerous slums. They've also set up more than a dozen small schools to keep kids off the streets. Children feel very dignified to put on a uniform and to be able to go to school. And their parents are also very proud to have the children go to school. Haiti has gotten the wrong end of the stick for centuries. The way of recovery is long, long, long and very difficult and requires a lot of patience and a lot of generosity. Underdevelopment is a very difficult thing to really change overnight. The country is going through a very difficult time, but the country is not dead. The country needs help. People are very courageous giving what they are enduring. That we cry a lot, and if we didn't, I think there'd be something wrong with us. And yet we have to be very strong because the people also need us to be very strong. Sometimes we feel it's impossible, but you know, as Catholics, we grow up with faith. We can't see it, but we hope it's going to happen. That's faith, and that's what we have, faith, that something someday will come about. We have several proverbs saying, that people should always hope. And I think it's in our culture, so we are always hopeful. They are such people of faith. I'm a religious, and I learn and deepen my faith every day being with the Haitians. People say to me, I hope you have time for prayer. I said, I trip over Jesus every day. You know, I see Jesus sick on the street. I see Jesus dead on the street. I see Jesus in the crying mother who just lost her child. The gospel is alive every minute. I believe in God absolutely and firmly, I have no doubt. I find it a lot harder to believe in people, a lot harder. We're trying to humanize a place that's very dehumanized by poverty and violence and hunger and sickness. I honestly feel that spending my time this way is producing fruit that doesn't disappear and doesn't rot. And probably the day I don't believe that anymore is the day I won't be able to do it anymore. It's a privilege for me to be here. And I feel, I feel grateful for God's call, you know, because we're not all called, like, not everyone can work in Haiti. I'm not ever going to see any great results, it's, it's not going to happen, but I have to believe in my heart that every little gesture of kindness, stop that cycle of violence somehow, somewhere, has to. Mm -hmm.